closing stages of the Better Electrical 500 here at Sandown. That man there, Greg Murphy, has just performed his final stop. And it was a time stop. They took 15 seconds or about 60 litres worth of fuel in car number 51. And the tricky part for everybody now as they all toss the coin is what tyres do you want to be on? Dry groove on the track. The rain falls. You can see the water on the lens of the camera. It's a 33 second margin between Scape and Lounge. Murphy now drops back into third place. Can Scape get to the end of this motor race on this load of fuel? Mate, there's 20 laps to go, 20 to go. This has been a tough day for not only the teams, but the drivers. Everyone has really earned their... Look at that front splitter. That's what I've been talking about. It's finally fractured. Now, this is a disaster for these blokes. What happens? We heard it flapping 10 or 15 laps ago. They separate after you've gone off the road or you have a tangle with somebody or you run the car too low and eventually it delaminates further and further and further. It'll be worse at high speed. That's where it'll get the big flutter up because of the camber, the shape of it, when it's got the most air pressure difference running under it. It's like an upside down aircraft wing, but it's the bit that we can't see. It's the under tray. Lowndes is chasing Scape. I'll tell you what the margin is momentarily. Murphy back in pit lane. What's happened here? Oh, this is a nightmare for the Super Chief team. The, the no, I've got stopped. I can't get to the finish yet to push me, boys. Come on. <laughs> Come on, he says. There's Dave Lovell, our cameraman. Dave might give him a push. He's still on the data, Steve. He's talking to Steve Henderson, his engineer. That's very strange. So something happened after the stop. It's had a, an electrical spike or something weird. It hasn't liked the fact that it's stopped. That just Give yourself takes... a wide entry and we'll push it in the garage. Mate. Oh no, that takes Murphy and Wheel right oh. out of the game. After so much hard work and great speed, such a good endurance racer and his partner Paul Wheel gave him a great opening stick today. Unbelievable. You're right, keep going. So they, uh, they got a huge technical problem or is it just a little glitch? They'll investigate. They will no doubt try and get him back out. Oh, real close here between Ambrose and Scaife. Scaife locks a break. He's got a fractured splitter in the front of this thing. He doesn't need to get tangled up with people, but it will be slowing him down. The margin closes. Craig Lowndes is on the charge. He's got more fuel. His chassis in good shape. Look at this hungry pack behind him. They get by Scaife, they buy back a lap. See it go nuts at high speed. I think Tander is one of those guys in that mix. Oh! Paul Morris. Morris ducking and diving. Three cars back from Scape there. Inside run. And it is Garth Tander in the 16 who gets by. Now he is on the lead lap. Oh no, this could be... Uh... And there's no love lost here between Morris and Scape. So 30 seconds now the margin between Scape and Lowndes. And Scape ignites as he gets tangled up in traffic. The pressure is on and his lead is down to 30 seconds. It's substantial, but Lowndes is definitely eating into it. Mark has got to stay cool. He's just got to ease his way to the end of this race. He's still got margin. The car's hurt. Aerodynamically, it's hurt. It won't be turning as well, and he's down on fuel. But he does have track position. Cameron McConville back behind the wheel of that car. Yes, he is. McConville is in the Valvoline Repco car. Inside on Scaife. And they're back up into the top ten. It's been a great day for the Gary Rogers boys. He's asking David Spencer, are we still in the lead? Look at that front splitter. This is going to be close. This will be very interesting. 16 laps to go. It starts to get dark here at Sandown now. Rain continues. And that's why this is one of the great Australian motorsport events, not only because of the history and heritage, but the test that it puts these V8 supercar drivers through. All thanks to Mother Nature and 500 kilometers. The officials are keeping a close eye on that uh, that flapping front, front splitter that you've been talking about. This is one of the spares that the Holden Racing Team 
as you can see, it's a, it's a specially moulded item, and at the moment, it's the lower section that has broken away and is flapping around at the moment. The officials are down along the pit wall, watching Mark Scaife, Neil, as he drives Greg, by each time. Greg, Greg, do you mind just tipping that we right will, up? We will, no problem. Thanks, mate. Yeah, if we can just go in there, that's the bit that's actually separating. And it, uh, further under there, see those scuff marks? You can see that's where it rubs across the ripple strips. But what happens is eventually it wears through and you get a little hole going and then the wear gap opens up and then eventually it delaminates and then that's what we've got now. Thanks for that. You're a great hand model, Rusty. <laughs> 26 seconds, 26 seconds. It is coming down with every single lap. That is the lead margin. Will Craig Lowndes, our three update. And plenty happened. Scaife and Dale Breed. Turn one, Scape had just come out of the pits and was having trouble steering that car. The battle raged between Mark Scape and Ivan Muller and Muller had the upper hand. Scape again, still coming to grips with that car, out of the pits. Warren Luff got together with Cameron McLean and it was a fairly soft touch and soft landing. And then look at these guys, nothing soft about this. Ingle into Ellery and Murphy tangled up in it as well. Damage to two of the three cars. And then Ellery's rear taillight assembly flying off. First lap out of the pits. Paul Morris and Steve Ellery, they were in the thick of it. And Morris was unrelenting. This was a battle for position. This was in the top six. And then Jason Richards spins the Dodo Commodore, gets going again. Unsighted, perhaps, smash into Dale Breed. Dale Breed gives a scare to our cameraman, the corner workers, and himself. There's been plenty going on, but the biggest talking point, other than can Scaife make it to the finish, is will this front splitter survive? And we heard the splitter separating probably 20-odd laps ago. And we also made mention of the fact, way back when Mark Scaife was battling with Ivan Muller, did he need to go into fuel conservation mode at that state of the race, that point of the race? Meantime, Garth Tand is having a bit of a speed battle here at the moment. He's losing a bit of pace, and it's Jason Richards in third place at the moment. Well, with 11 laps to go, let's welcome Chairman of Esco, Tony Cochran, to the Network 10 commentary booth. Tony, good to see you, and congratulations on the announcement about Bahrain on the calendar next year. Yeah, thanks, boys. Uh, it's been a big week uh, in V8 racing all over the world, and. Uh, uh, what a hell of a race we've got on our hands here in front of a tremendous crowd on a very wet and cold day in Melbourne. This is typical Sandown, isn't it? It's thrilling, <laughs> right yeah. to the very end. It never, you know, this place is tremendous. Uh, we love coming here and uh, uh, we had uh, a lot of officials from the Melbourne Racing Club here today and been talking to them about the future here. But it always throws up a tremendous race, doesn't it? It never fails. And uh, uh, I, I just long for the day when we can fit it into the calendar when it, the weather's a little better. I feel sorry for all the fans out there, and there's lots of them. But then we wouldn't have this thrilling race. <laughs> yeah, I, well, you know, I, I guess that's uh, probably part of it today, but it uh, really has been a ripper of a race. It just goes to show, you know, bring on Bathurst. I, I think Bathurst this year is going to be unbelievable. Seconds gap to and you just heard Good from the team low. there. Yeah, it's uh, 10 to go. And he's got a 15-second margin on the last lap. And Lowndes is making ground at sort of a second and a bit per lap. It varies according to the traffic flow. Well, he needs to catch him more than that, doesn't he? Yeah. With 10 to See, go, and he's only got 15 seconds. would drop two seconds in a manoeuvre like that. So they're the things that he can't afford, but he equally can't afford to be involved in an accident. And Tony, we mentioned earlier that uh, your commitment, Avesco's commitment to the fans, is to have no fewer than 10 domestic races here. Yeah, no, they that, want to that, hear it from your mouth. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, if it makes them feel sleep any better, I can assure them, whilst I'm chairman, that uh, we're determined there'll be at least 10, at least 10 rounds in Australia, um, and um, that's uh, locked in in uh, not only stone, but it's part of our FIA and CAMS agreement going forward, and. Um, we, uh, we understand that the heartland is very important to us. We're going to uh, host at least uh, two rounds in each of the major uh, states and one round in all the other states. In fact, we're one of the few sports that's truly national. We go everywhere in Australia and uh, we, uh, we're very close to doing a new deal with the Tasmanian government that'll see us even going to Simmons Plains for at least another uh, seven or eight years. 
Sorry to interrupt, Tony, but we've You're got right. a heck of a motor race unfolding here. The last time through, it was a 10.8 second margin. Scaife to Lowndes. Lowndes made good ground and Scaife got held up by traffic on that last one. And this man is in third position at the moment, on for his best result of the year after some tough times. Tan is in fourth. There's Ron Harrop. I think Jason's done a unbelievable job this year. This team has really come on Tasman Motorsports in leaps and bounds and congratulations. I know how much hard work this team's put in and it just goes to show how damn competitive this sport is now. Um, and Jason Richards, I, I think he's had an outstanding year. A little bit of luck, he would have had some better results and uh, I would dearly love to see them on the uh, podium, podium today. Neil, the HRT team down here just fingers crossed. They've obviously done their figures on as far as strategy goes, but I said to them, you're going to make it through to the end. They said, we just got to go for it now. It will be really, really close. Eight seconds, the margin between Scaife and Lowndes. He can catch him. And what they're talking about, is you've only just joined us in really, really close. Scaife's nursing the car. Aerodynamically, the car's been hurt at the front. It's got a fracture in the front air dam, the splitter, we call it. They're also running short of fuel in the HRT car. Mark Stopp on lap number 95, it meant doing a 66 lap stint. And you'd almost have anybody chasing you other than Craig Lounge, wouldn't you? I mean, Absolutely. Um, you know, what, a, what a hell of a driver and what a great ambassador he is for our championship. And let's not forget about Ivan Muller. He held his end of the deal up and did a nice job. There's Todd Kelly, teammate to Mark Scaife. Recently re-signed with the team for two years. These guys have won this event before two years ago. They would dearly love to do it again. They're fifth and sixth in the championship, respectively. And Todd willing his teammate on and hoping they have enough fuel in the tank. Mark's short shifting very early there. Here's Lowndes. So Scape's gone through the control line. Let's see what the time split is back to Lowndes. They're on their 154th lap. It's 5.8 seconds. It's going to be red hot at the end. There's Scape in the foreground. That's Lowndes in the background. Here he is. Does it get any better? The big boys, Scape v Lowndes, the former teammates. And someone spun, I think, in front. That, that was Lowndes sliding. Water on the screen. He was all crossed up through turn one. He's pushing, pushing, pushing. And at the same time, that is exactly what Jason Richards is, is doing. Wally Story, the chief engineer, doesn't like us interviewing him at this time, but this car has good speed and you've made some, some good decisions today while given the, the conditions. Well, right now, Rust, I'm sort of sweating on the fact that it doesn't rain, aren't I? It makes I'm racing both ends of me right now on wets. So if it starts raining too much, I'm in fair bit of strife. If it stays dry, I'm looking pretty cheeky. So uh, we'll just wait to see how it works out, eh? That's the latest there, boys, from Dodo Racing. A seasoned campaigner. He worked with our own Neil Crompton for many years and a great bloke to boot. And he knows when to gamble. And I know his voice, and when I hear his voice like that, there's a lot of tension in it. <laughs> so he's got his heart in his mouth at the moment. And why wouldn't you? This is a thrilling end to a fabulous event. Another lap complete. Let's see what the margin is this time round. And it's 5.8 seconds last time. Getting wetter. So that plays against what Wally's hoping for. There's Lowndes. Margin, 3.5 seconds. Seven laps to go, mate. Four seconds. There's the margin. You can see the green boxes shows the time that Lowndes has been taking from Scaife in the last four laps of this motor race. Quick update for the disappointment for Greg Murphy and Paul Wheel. That engine, they just refired it up in the garage and they had someone knocking inside. So there's a rattle there. Disappointment for them. Scaife all over the sixth place. Cat Ford of Jason Bright. And Lowndes looming. What a fantastic finish. Scaife has got uh, Lowndes all over his rear view mirror now. And he's got to deal with the Cat Ford and that car's in position. Jason Bright is sixth at the moment, so Jason's going to be in no hurry to do him any favours. Let's not forget, Lowndes is fourth in the championship standings. This is round nine of 13. And there's been significant frustration for Lowndes on several occasions this year when he's been in a top position to maximise on points, and it hasn't gone his way. But it's all going his way now. You'd have to say love them or hate them. The Irish can build a team. <laughs> Never thought of them as Irish, really, but that's a good point. Well, that's sort of pseudo-Irish, aren't they? Irish, English, whatever they are. Six to go, mate. From somewhere else. Inside. But they've uh, done a hell of a job with this team, no question. 1.4 seconds is the margin. Scape to Lowndes. Campbell Little says you're doing a great job. Stay with it. Scape's limping home. With 156th lap. We've had the chairman of Avesco, Tony Cochran, with us. Tony, again, congratulations on doing the deal for Bahrain. 
and uh, thanks for joining us in the box. Hey, pleasure. And bring on Bathurst, guys. We're in for a huge one this year, and I know we're going to have a great crowd up there, and uh, looking forward to seeing everybody up there, and then uh, back here at Phillip Island for the uh, grand finale in only a couple of months' time, and uh, we'll be all wrapped up. It's been a hell of a year. Thanks, guys. Thanks, there he Tony. Is. The boss of the V8s, Tony Cochran. 1.4 seconds between Mark Scape, Craig Lowndes, Holden Racing Team versus Triple Eight Racing. You ride with Lowndes. You're zeroing in on Scape. And look at the mid-quarter speed difference between the two cars. Craig is just able to make uh, space in leaps and bounds over there. The better electrical 500. What an achievement it would be for the team to win. It's the naming rights sponsor of the event and their team could do it. It's a drag race Mini, down the front break. straight. We've got the break, just think about it. And the Ford and the Holden fans absolutely on their feet. This is a great battle between two great racing drivers, two top teams. These two blokes have got a lot of respect for each other. They enjoy each other's company. They respect each other's performances, but right now, both want to win this motor race. There's inside the Triple Eight cam. Tense is an understatement. There's Natalie Lowndes, wife of Craig. And here's the whole and racing team cam. Is this Lowndes shot up the back straight? You would think so, but he comes back into the draft. And Mark will go to the left here. He'll make Craig go the long way. So he'll stay left. There he goes. Craig's got to go around the long way, which will be very difficult because he knows that Mark is weak here. Mark's car doesn't want to turn through here because of the aero problem. No silly moves just yet. And it's greasy on the inside. Craig looked at it and then thought, whoop, I'm not going down there. So he just decided to pin his nose to the back of the Commodore. Campbell Little said, mate, you know you've got under brakes, just think about it. Turn one might be the opportunity for Lowndes. And he's coming close. He gave Scape a little tap before, and perhaps almost another one. Good run out of the final corner. Is this Lowndes' opportunity? Yes! He draws alongside Mark Scape. Now it's a true drag race. You probably get him down here, but he's going to have to really stick his nose in, and it'll be the greasy side of the road, side by side. Lowndes gets in. Scape doesn't want to yield, but he has to. New race leader. Craig Lowndes has his nose in front. What an event. What a race for a moment to come to. Both of them skating into turn two. It's very wet up at two and three. The closing laps. Three to go here at Sandown International Raceway in Melbourne. Four laps to go, mate. Four laps to go. You just keep your head down. Nice job. The encouragement, the backup from Campbell Little. Okay. Craig Lowndes, engineer, and the simple answer of OK. Look how cool he is. It's got to be a mistake-free run now for Lowndes. He's already skipped away. Oh, the thing crossed up at the end of the back straight. That was a big catch. And you might remember the beginning of this race, the first 50-odd laps, when Lowndes broke out a 20-second lead. Oh, <laughs> right catch. on the limit. That's 180 kilometres an hour in dry conditions. It's a little less than that out there right now, but it'd be a good 160. Let's tell you some other fabulous stories, and that is that of the Dodo Racing Team. Jason Richards and, and uh, Jamie Wincup a third. Garth Tander. And Rick Kelly a fourth. And the second Triple Eight Falcon of Steve Ellery and Adam Macro a fifth. Jason Richards is 39 oh, seconds behind. Lowndes is going to have to be careful. He's on the inside of Bright. This puts him going around the long way here at two, but Jason gets out of it early. Ingle has fought hard to come back up into seventh place behind Jason Bright. Bow is eighth, Morris is ninth, and McConville is poised for a top ten result. Final couple of laps. championship considerations here as well. Here's the third place man. This will boost Craig Lowndes' championship position. Third place, Jason Richards. The leaders are heading off the end of the back straight. He's at the end of the front straight. He's in front of Garth Tander. James Courtney's just outside the top 10. He's 11th at the moment. Lowndes scape. Jason Richards, Garth Panda, Steve Ellery, a fine performance after the tough day 
at Oran Park after that crash in practice. Jason Bright, Russell Ingle, John Bow, Paul Morris, Cam McConville, that's the top 10. Damage to the front right corner here of Garth Tander's HSV dealer team entry. And Scaife in, Scaife is in. They need fuel, splash and dash to get him home. There is a healthy margin back to Jason Richards. So close, they almost made it. Just a couple of seconds worth of fuel. You get about four litres a second. Yeah, the team Neil right through the end there, those last seven or eight laps, like we mentioned, they were worried about it, but obviously it was in quick, but that splitter, it doesn't look bad when you initially look at it, but when it gets that load on it, it really folds up and it's got to affect him. And here comes Jason Richards. He's on at the top of the straight. There is Scaife into turn one. That should be enough for Mark to hold on for the next couple of laps. It's probably only, you know, somewhere between five and ten litres of fuel, just enough to make sure that he gets home. For Jason Richards, what a performance. He and Jamie Wincup. He has only done two 500k events here at Sandown last year with Fabian Coulthard and in 2003 with Simon Wills. And there are the members of his team. There's Greg Murphy's dad, Kevin, part of that Tasman Motorsports Dodo Racing Group. But this is your race leader. He's a two-time winner. He did it back-to-back -back in the 90s with Greg Murphy and the Holden okay, Racing last Team. Last lap, last lap. And now he's going to okay. do it in 3.1 kilometres time for Triple Eight Racing. They themselves very young in V8 supercars and Campbell Little. Was he trying to hide a smile there? They'll be smiling plenty in less than a lap. Campbell's been around in motor racing for a long time. And someone actually went straight ahead there in turn two. You saw the taillights disappearing over the rise and down into the gully. And the remark that I was going to make is that he knows you can't relax until that flag's out. Uh-oh, which car 23, was that? It's 23. Oh, OK, it's the sister car. It's Fabian Coulthard. We saw the tail lights vanish over the rise and down into the gully. Okay, I'm having fun then. Only four corners to go here for Lowndes. The rain increases. What a performance. What a performance. He blasted away at the beginning. He got the early jump, had a massive margin. Anyway, I can do a burnout now. His French teammate, Ivan Muller, did his end. He's a goofball, isn't he? And Lowndes is planning how he can do burnouts. He's on his way home and he's got to hold on to it. Final couple of corners. The Better Electrical 500 will be won by the Better Electrical Falcon. Triple Eight Racing, Roland Dane and all his team will celebrate. Craig Lowndes, Ivan Muller win Sandown. The Better Electrical 500 is theirs. Fantastic job, eh? What a drive. And he is back in this championship chase. Yeah, thanks. Bloody great. Thank, uh, thank to Ebar as well. Did a bloody fantastic job at that middle bit. Congratulations to the Better Electrical Triple Eight team. They have done a great job. They've presented a beautiful car to those drivers today. Mark Scape will finish in second place. Last time through, he was 36 seconds down. At least that's a bit of sugar for a hard day's work after some tough times for him this year. You're not wrong. Valuable Sorry. championship points. And it was the one that slipped away, but a mighty drive from Scaife and Kelly. Well done, and how about Good these job. boys? This is well brilliant. Well done. For Jason right Richards and Jamie Winkup. That's a stunning performance for the team that moved from Sydney to Melbourne this past Christmas. And there, Kevin Murphy and all of the gang, Ron Harrop, Wally Story. Some high emotion down there. That was sensational. We checked the VB scoreboard. A Lowndes Muller victory. And when you think about it, Lowndes won the 280k event at Queensland. He's won the 500k event here in Victoria. How good does he look heading to Bathurst? Scaife and Kelly, and then Richards and Wincup, the podium getters. Kelly and Tander, valuable points there. And well done to Steve Ellery and Adam Macro. That's both Triple Eight Falcons in the top five. And uh, it's just uh, very enjoyable to watch those two guys at work and uh, particularly good to see the great sportsmanship between the two of them. I was just about...